In this video, I'm trying something a little different. We're going to be taking a look at the apps that I use on my iPhone. So if we get started by just taking a look at the home screen, these tend to be the apps that I use the most, although some are just dotted around the place. Um, we have the weather app, just for checking the weather. You need to know if you have a coast or not. And then you've got YouTube for watching YouTube videos and just checking comments and my channel. Then we've got Google Analytics, which is what I use for seeing the statistics of the richer tech website. So I can see what posts are doing well, uh, when people are visiting, if people are on the website right now. And then we have Notion. Now Notion is something that I've been taking a look at quite recently. And it's really interesting for managing lots amount of information and keeping track of various different things. Previously, I was using OneNote, but I've started to have a mess around with Notion and I've been trying it out for around a week or so and I quite like how it works. So if we just take a look in the app, I've set up some various different workspaces for university, Richard Tech and various other things. So here we can see I've got some saved links of things that I'm interested and need to follow up with. And then we can just take a look at the various different workspaces that I have set up. So there's a journal, which is one of the default ones. Then in Richard Tech, I have a few different pages. I've got one for the video schedule, one for tracking statistics and the history of the channel. And then we've got another one for inventory, which is just keeping track of the products that I have to review. So if we just take a look at the schedule, for example, this will load up and we can see the different videos that I currently have planned. And I can link these to other pages and they all have sub pages within them. So Notion is quite powerful for doing this. It's more than just a note taking app you can actually dive into various different video projects and store things about that video if you've got quite a lot of data to keep track of. So we can just jump back to the schedule and you can see the status of the video when I'm planning to publish it. I've categorized it into a few different categories. And of course, when it is live, that URL is just so I can keep track of everything. So that is Notion. It's well worth a look at if you're a student or just want a lot of information to keep track of, it's very useful. Then we've got Tweetbot, which is what I use for accessing Twitter on my phone. A lot of people just use the normal Twitter app, but I've been using Twitter for a long time on iOS, and I remember when there was never an official Twitter app. So I decided to use Tweetbot, and it's just worked great ever since, and it's really snappy, and it works very well, and feels like a native iOS app, which I prefer over the Twitter app, although I do still have the Twitter app installed on my phone just because there's a few things that Tweetbot can't do. So this is Tweetbot. The interface is really nice and you can just sort of dive into tweets by swiping and it features gestures around the place. And it's really powerful for Twitter. It's very useful and it's really fast as well, which is great because on my iPhone success, I'm still rocking that. The newer Twitter app does feel a little bit more sluggish. So anything that uses less resources for me is a big win. Now the rest of the social apps are all in this social folder. So I've got Facebook, Messages, Snapchat, Skype, Discord, and Apollo. All of these but Apollo are all messaging apps for messaging different people. Discord tends to be for gaming. Skype is usually for family and Snapchat is for friends. And then Facebook is just Facebook. But Apollo is a Reddit client. And Reddit is, if you don't know what Reddit is, it's a big social network full of various different uh, subreddits for different interests and things like that. So we can just jump into the Apple subreddit and it's everything about Apple. So I use Reddit to keep track of the news and sort of various different things that are happening because there's a lot of technology news out there and a lot of news in general. So Reddit just does a great job at bringing that all into one place. And it's also interesting to read the discussions and the comments that people are having about the different things that are going on. Swiping across, we've got Facebook pages for managing the Facebook pages, such as Richard Tech and a few other pages. LinkedIn for professional social networking. If you need to have a professional social media presence, LinkedIn is pretty good for that. Buffer, which is what I use for managing the Richard Tech socials and scheduling. So I can just plan tweets and Facebook posts ahead of time. So they go up right when a video goes live. Then we've got phone, WhatsApp, which are pretty self-explanatory, the official Twitter app, Pinterest and FaceTime. Now I've been using Pinterest a lot during my university terms for collating mood boards and various other various inspiration. So it's really useful for that if you're a creative student, which I am, and I have a 
bunch of different mood boards for the different projects that I've had to do over the last year. And it's just really good for finding a bunch of images to stick into a mood board for different inspiration. Now into the photography folder, I've got the camera, the photos app, <clears throat> Instagram for posting photos online. If you're not following Rich Tech on Instagram, you should be, because you'll see some behind the scenes occasionally, and also all the pictures from various videos and thumbnails. So you can just keep track of what's going on. Then we've got Visco. I don't really use Visco that much anymore, but I used to use it a bunch when I used to edit a lot of photos on my phone. Now I tend to do this on my computer in Adobe Lightroom. Then we've got Google Photos, which I use for backing up all of the photos on my phone. And this means that I just have peace of mind that they're backed up online. We've got Pixelmator. I don't really do that much photo editing on my phone like Visco, so I tend to use this on the iPad a bit more. Uh, then we've got Filmborn, which is a film emulation app. So if you want anything to look more like it's been taken on film and not on an iPhone, it's quite good for that. Then we've got Obscura, which is a phone app for manual camera controls. So the iPhone camera app traditionally has been very basic and locked down. So if you want anything that gives you manual control, you're going to be looking at a third party app to do that. So that's where Obscura comes in. It gives you manual controls over shutter speed. It lets you shoot raw as well, which is quite nice. And it lets you control your ISO and everything like that. Very good if you want a manual photo app. Then we've got Lux, which is a light meter app. And this is more handy if you're doing studio photography or anything that requires you to double check your settings beforehand, like shooting on film. So you can just open up Lux, double check your settings and have that peace of mind that your photo is gonna turn out somewhat legible. Um, so then we've got Facebook Messenger to the right of that, which I tend to use as my messaging platform of choice, just because that's where everyone is. So that's what is easier to get in touch with people. Then if we go down to the bottom of the screen, we've got my dock. And in my dock, we've got the mail app, which is traditionally always empty because I'm all about that inbox zero life. So if anything doesn't need to be my inbox, I just archive it straight away and I'll just double check if I need to look back at it. Then we've got Spotify. Now Spotify is what I use for all of my music. I rack up quite a few minutes on Spotify every year when you get the end of year summary. And last year, I think I got around 120,000 listening minutes, which is quite a lot of time spent on Spotify. So I've got my entire music library. I've got 3000 songs downloaded on my phone and it's what I listen to music through. Spotify, I just really like it and I've been using it for years. Then we've got Safari for web browsing. It just works really well on iOS. And then To Do by Microsoft, which I use for short-term task management, just keeping track of things. I use it slightly differently to Notion, where Notion is just more for bigger projects that require a big historical track record of where as soon as I've done something in Microsoft To Do, I just tick it and it disappears. So it's very handy for just keeping track of things. And I use Microsoft To Do and not the Reminders app because I actually use it across my computer and laptop as well. And it just syncs together really nicely. So now let's dive onto the next home screen. And this is where things tend to get a little more messy and disorganized, but I just tend to chuck everything in the other folder. I'm sure all of you have a single folder on your phone where you just tend to dump stuff, if you're on iOS at least. Until iOS 14 comes out with the app library, I'm looking forward to that quite a lot. And my home screen is going to be changing drastically when that comes out. The games folder, I just have nine games. I don't tend to play that many games anymore, but I just keep some on my phone in case I need a few handy. And then last of all, we have the Nintendo Switch Online app. Now I find this really handy because I jumped on that Animal Crossing bandwagon and I found that typing in game was terrible. It's just really slow to type out a full sentence. And actually you can use the app on your phone for in-game chat, <clears throat> which makes it way easier to send messages really quickly. So if you play a lot of Animal Crossing or just have a Nintendo Switch, download this and it will probably come in handy when you're playing your games. Then next across, we've got the video folder. And this is where I've got a bunch of different streaming services and entertainment apps. Then next we've got the music folder. And this is where I have everything that isn't Spotify that's audio related. So I've got SoundCloud, which is great for discovering new artists. Then there's Shazam, which I use for finding out what a song is if I really like it. If it's on the radio, I'll just open up Shazam, find a song and it'll save it to a Spotify playlist automatically as well. 
Then I've got BBC Sounds for BBC Radio here in the UK. Then there's the iTunes Store and the Music App. I don't use either of those because I'm all about that Spotify life. And then last of all, there's Last FM, which I use for keeping track of what I've listened to on Spotify. Then there's the Apple folder. This is where all of the Apple apps that I don't really use go. I do use a couple like Activity and Calendar, but I have these as widgets on my home screen sidebar, so I don't really need to open up the app itself. Then in the other app, this is where a lot of the apps go. So in here on the first page, these tend to be things that I use more often. So there's PayPal, File Explorer, which I use for network file browsing, LifeX for controlling the lights in my room. So I can control the desk behind me with the app on my phone. It's really great. And the LifeX strips are great quality as well. Then we've got OneDrive because I've got Office 365. So I have a terabyte of online storage. So I have all of my coursework and things like that in OneDrive as well as all of my video scripts as well. YouTube Studio for keeping track of all of my YouTube comments. I try to reply to everyone that leaves a comment. So if you like watching the videos and you wanna leave a comment, I'll try my best to get back to you. And it also lets me keep track of my channel and my statistics and everything like that. Then there's Bring, which is a shopping list app. So you can just add things and it'll add a notification to show you how many things you've actually got in your shopping list. It's very handy. So for example, if I just add soap, then I close the app, it will give me a notification. So I know that there's something in my shopping list that I need to get. And the app's just really polished and it works really well. Then there's Google Maps for navigation and if I'm driving, I use it as a sat nav. And then there's speed test for keeping track of the internet speed. Then there's three for managing my phone contract. And then there's scannable, which I use for scanning documents into my phone. Now, I've made a video on this as well. So if you want to check that out, check out the link in the top corner for the video on scannable. It's really handy for digitizing documents. Then there's Blackboard. If you're a student, you'll know what this is. Then I've got Strava for keeping track of fitness. Then there's DJI Fly. I recently got a drone, so I've been flying that around, but ever since I got it, it's been raining or windy, so maybe it's not my luck. But the DJI Fly app is the app that the Mavic Mini uses. It doesn't use DJI Go. Then to go alongside that, I've got UAV Forecast. This is really useful. It shows me if the quality, it shows me if the location that I'm flying at or if the weather's appropriate or not, and it'll let me check the weather forecast and the wind speeds and the gust speeds for the various different altitudes that I can fly my drone into. Because the higher up you go, the faster the wind gets. So if you're flying your drone, that's something to bear in mind. Then at the bottom of this second screen, there's a couple of apps for transportation. Then we've got Chrome for browsing. I tend to use this if I need to stay signed into anything. Safari, I just tend to use as a quick web browser. Then we've got Nectar and Tesco Club Cards. These are loyalty cards for supermarkets in the UK. Then there's Sync, and I use it to sync over my phone library to my computer. So I have a backup of my photos on Google Photos as well as physically on my computer. Then there's Zion Play, which I use for my camera gimbal. And then Work Outdoors, which will let me save a map onto my Apple Watch. So I can use that to navigate and you can save trails and different routes and things like that without the need to actually get your phone out. Then there's Met Office, which is the weather app for the government in the UK. Then we've got Oral-B for my toothbrush because my toothbrush syncs with my phone. Yep. And then there's uni days for student discounts. If you're a student and you're in the UK, I'm not sure if it's available in the US. Uni days is great as you can get discounts on various stores in physical locations as well as online. Then we've got eBay for buying and selling stuff. And then there's Google Home and Google Assistant for my Google Home Mini. Then we've got BBC News, the Anchor Rove app for my dash cam, Microsoft Office because I use that to write all my scripts and all of my different work. Then there's Hole 19 which I use for golf. I haven't really played golf recently, but for keeping track of my score, Hole 19 is what I use for that. Then we've got What Three Words which is a really interesting app. It will allocate three words to any location and you can use that for emergency services or just giving directions. And it's much easier to understand to someone if you can just share them three words and they can figure out where you are pretty fast. It's very useful. And then finally, in the other folder, it's been quite a big folder, so sorry if I'm rambling about this now. We've got Ordnance Survey Maps, and these are great for footpaths in the UK. And if you want to go out walking or check out different locations. Then we've got Amazon for shopping online. Google Authenticator for two-factor authentication, and I've got LastPass for managing all of my passwords. 
I've been using LastPass for ages and I think it just works really well for my use case and I've had barely any issues with it to be honest so it's well worth using if you want something that will generate and store passwords for you. Then finally on my home screen we've got the final four apps. There's Ring for my doorbell, then I've got Parcel for keeping track of various different deliveries because with different couriers they've all got different apps. The Parcel app just brings it all into one place and it will send you a notification if you subscribe to their premium option which is really cheap. It will just send you a notification so you can keep track of your various deliveries and this is quite useful for me because I get a bunch of different stuff to review so just being able to keep track of that and schedule things around that is really handy. Then finally we've got Sonos and Teleprompter. Sonos is what I use for the smart speakers around the home. We've got a couple of Sonos speakers and they're really impressive so I'm going to try and get a review of that done pretty soon really. I really want to share my thoughts on the Sonos experience. And uh, then we've got Teleprompter, which I use for rich tech videos. I've been using a teleprompter recently for when I'm in front of the camera. And so I read my script to the camera and then I use the Teleprompter app on my phone to control the teleprompter on the iPad that's in front of the camera. And they are all of the apps on my phone. So thanks for watching the video if you've made it through this far. It's been quite a long video and probably a bit of rambling on my end, but hopefully you got something out of it. If you want to see more videos in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's very much appreciated. Follow Rich Tech on all the various social media platforms that I've shown off in this video. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.